back out for round two and i'll tell you what i timed that perfect that has just been filled up and it's still warm to the touch right let's get the gear back on the boat for round two stop it this time we'll make a Out in the water first. Gives me extra surface interval. When you're saying that, it's been about five hours. That wind is still down at the moment. See the old carrot flag up the top there, look. AKA the windsock. See how many scallops we can go and grab. Going deeper. We're going to drift down past here, past the wreck, past the uh, row row, which is about here. 26 metres, so should hit the stern. And here comes the rain. Quick get in the water so you don't get, right, so you don't get wet, Matt. Hey? So you quick get in the water so you don't, we're not wet. Where are you at? We're 27 metres Perfect. of water. Perfect. Perfect. So the ammo wreck is, is in here somewhere, a little bit further down. Just about work out the lead and marks. There's a, um, it's very, very hard for you on the camera, but there's a, a lighthouse and behind it is M&S now, but that was, or Creasy's. That used to be a Woolworths. It's the third window over, which we're almost on. And then also in this direction, we have the coachman's house, which is a white gable, and a pole just here. And it's about that far away at the moment, so once we drift down that way, which we're heading, and they line up, they have the ammo wreck. Matt is actually heading to the ammo. That, even though that's a uh, marker, hydrographics marker for a shipwreck, that isn't it, it's actually down here. And you can see 25 and we know the stern is 27 so you might see it as a 26 at the low tide that's why you can see max bubbles swimming off that way because he knows he's too shallow so he's making his way out to try and intercept it and i tell you what if he doesn't see it i'll be very surprised we'll fly over it in a minute and we'll get it on the uh, on the depth depth sounder so yeah the seabed's dropping away now we should drift over it. We're drifting a bit southwesterly at the moment, so but I'm sure we'll see it. See, there's a 30 contour, and there's a 20, and the stern's about 27. It's laying out this way. So there, look, just coming into view now. See what I mean? Bang on, 27. We're dropping down deeper now. So it's dropped up to 24 because we're on top of the shipwreck. And you can see how far it is out there, look. So that's just a rough target, and then we go up and down to find it. And then when you see that, that's when you'll be saying, chop the shot in. And Matt is just there, so he must be very, very close to it. He hasn't moved very far. But she said he wouldn't anyway. So he's definitely on his way up. You see the larger bubbles now. In fact, I can see him. Just see the back of his white tanks there. His safety stop is normally a minute. Sometimes. But yeah, he's, he's almost there. Almost my turn to get down there. Might go down past. Tide's going that way, south. I'm not gonna do it. Mm, I don't know. Four iron maybe. A bit of a reef dive at four iron. We'll see. Let's say indecisive. All the places we got to dive were always indecisive. It's not so bad if you don't want to get scallops, but we want to try and get a little bit of scallops and a little bit of uh, footage on a reef or something like that. It'd be nice to see some crayfish again. 
seen a few crayfish at the moment, but none of them are massive. And if you're wondering why I don't take crayfish, it's because it's illegal for divers to take uh, crayfish. So I'm, I'm too tight to buy one from the shop because they're very, very expensive. I've never tasted one. And I'm worried if I do taste one, I'd like it so much, so I'd have to uh, sneakily take one. <laughs> nah, I'm joking. It's not worth it. I've just tide checking. I've just got you sort of north of Forine. So right there, north of Forine. At 27 meters. Drop me on the head if you want. Uh, that's exactly where I'm dropping you. 27 meters, right on the uh, on the tip of it. Oh, I see some bass. So you should, if you go down deep, down into 30, you go past the anchor and stuff. Cool. Yeah, I hit one on the outside. And there's one on the inside as well. Yeah. What a day. Make the most of it before the uh, little storm comes tonight. Being summer. Yeah, the song is <laughs> Decision was made, four iron it is. So we're just dropping down north of it and we're gonna drift down. So I'm expecting to hit the sand, look for a couple of scallops maybe, and then hit the reef. Well, fingers crossed anyway. <laughs> Bad. One, as soon as I hit the bottom. Check my air, 220, which is quite a bit. Yeah, too small that one. Just need to try and find the uh, reef now. Somewhere in the gloom. Just look for a few more scallops. So this is basically an area that all the old shells get chucked back in. This is probably a year's worth of um, scallops going back in the sea. Oh, I can see the reef just right on the edge of my vision, about 20 meters away. Pick up these extra scallops. That's a nice decent sized one. And then head back to the reef. Mm -hmm. I think the last time I dive this was with Phil, but it's one of them reefs that every time you dive you see something different. We've seen all sorts of uh, marine life on this one. And it actually can, at certain times of year, be really, really nice and colourful. So, fingers crossed, we see something good. It may look like I'm holding my camera slightly skew with, but I'm not. This is actually how the seabed looks. So it's covered in scours. The tide rushes past here twice a day. Quite a force. You can see from here, even just before you even get to the reef, there's massive wrasse swimming around the top.
reef is really home to a few huge wrasse. But along with the huge wrasse, and I do actually really enjoy seeing these, this is a small crayfish as well. See how close we can get to him. These are so colourful when you get in close. See his little beady black eyes. That's well under size. Another thing this reef I think has got loads of is these cluster anemones as well, these yellow ones. To be honest, it's completely covered in sea life. It's not until you stop and take a little slow look and have a look at the, the finer points in the little crevices and the little cracks. Some of the stuff you can swim past and not even notice. What I should have done on this dive is probably leave my bag behind and then send up a delayed after 15 minutes. But I thought I was going to get a load more scallops than I actually did. So, even though it's a pain, it's it's a pain because on, on these reef dives, basically you've got to keep reeling up and down depending on what depth you want. And it's always in my left hand, so it only leaves my right hand, look at my computer, and film with. One final check, and that's confirming my air is actually going down. So, and it's going down at a rate I, I, I kind of expected. So I'll let this dust clear and then we'll make our way around this reef. It is actually a really big reef. Oh, This is a many ribbed jellyfish. Similar to the crystals we've been seeing but loads around the UK at the moment. Obviously dead. Right now I'm comfortable and I'll sort my bag out. Let's go and have a look around this reef. Another, another cray so early. Same again, jet black eyes. massive amount of tide pushing me around the reef which is ideal for filming but though I am getting a bit of an upwelling of all this silt but we can deal with it plenty of abandoned pots looks like this one's been a long time here it's even had the neck taken out of it so on this reef you'll notice there's loads of spinny cucumbers oh and some more uh, scallop shells there look a little bit more recent some of them have still got frills in so possibly it's from one of the boats earlier on in the day it's worth mentioning this reef splits into two there's two separate heads this part I always get caught out with because basically what the tide does is it funnels you into this narrow gap so there's two high pinnacles either side. I tend to try and hold back a little bit. Oh, especially when I've noticed another crayfish I want to go and have a look at. This one's a big boy. Or big gill. Look at them lilac colours around the face. This is a really nice intense collared one, this one. And there, look at the cluster anemones all over it as well. This reef seems to be full of them. I guess I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to have to have, let go of this reef and get sucked through this gap. Fingers crossed there's no pot ropes to catch up on. One last little check. I'm good to go. 
You can see the sand I've kicked up getting washed through the hole as well. Got to be careful of my line not, that doesn't go left and get wrapped right around that head. Looks like my rope's going straight back up to the surface, so I'm good to proceed. One last goodbye. Catch out the corner of my eye, there's loads of fish above my head swimming around, circling above me. I'll try and see if I can film some. Also, there's plenty of crevices. I need to go in and have a little look. This is where they hide all the gems. See a spinner cucumber happily eating on that ledge. Some old scallop shells. I always go through phases of looking for anchors and trying to log anchors, take a photograph, get its location and put it in a register I've got going. But I've never actually seen this one. Now I know there's three other huge anchors around this reef, but this one snapped. So you can see the fluke at the top, and this is the, um, the shank, snapped off. That must have taken some force to snap that off. Now was it snapped in the reef while it was anchoring a boat? and they just pulled up the rest of it? Or was it snapped and they decided to just throw the thing back over anyway? I guess we'll never know, but it's pretty cool to see. Oh, oh yeah, and I'll take the depths as well. something you don't see every day that's pretty cool I'm gonna continue around this reef and I'm gonna to stick to the northern head only so we're still on the north head I can turn around behind me and swim south probably 10 meters and join another head but that's pretty cool drops down onto a bouldery um, sandy seabed here but what I'm gonna do now is because now I'm in the lee of the reef which means of the the reef is protecting me from the tide. I'm going to just slowly uh, go back up to the surface, have a look up this reef. thinking to myself this is ideal habitat for John Dorries. I haven't seen a John Dory in a long time. This is very similar rock formation to um, Long Pierre. Look at this bit here, it's all scalloped out, perfectly round. The huge walls uh, continuing up to the north anyway. Let's swim up this, see what we can see. Looks like there's not much there but once we turn the lights on there's all sorts hidden there. Yellow cluster anemones. Whole rocks covered them. There's loads of other stuff here which I don't really know what it is. I mean, this orange stuff on the right, I'm not quite sure. Some star of obsidian, the blue stuff. 
some chocolate finger. And there's some pelches from a, either a dogfish or a bullhoss. shells of some sort. Could be oyster, could be scallops. Another abandoned crab pot, a pile of pot. Doors open so it doesn't form any um, any danger to any crabs. Just check out how it's been overtaken by the sponges and the briar zones. check the air plenty of air left I'm getting shallower as well so the shallower I get or oh, three minutes left I better actually shake a leg and get up this reef a little bit shallower look at how high it goes still going 10 or 15 meters above again we're reaching a 12 meter mark because we can see the long seaweeds another abandoned pot this must be really snaggy this one looks completely destroyed but completely covered in sponge again it's always lovely to hear Matt's above us in the boat. Another cray, that's the fourth from one dive. Give them a stroke. They like having their antennae stroked. You can tell when they don't like it because they start creaking. That was a nice small one, he's got his own hole. They never normally sit in holes but that one seems to have found a little hole he can hide inside for protection. reef is awesome can't believe how much life's on it look at this one cotton spinner it's black but it's got like neon blue ends to its little spiky fits I'm not quite sure what they're called but nice to look at As I carefully squeeze up these really tight crevices, I know when I get to the top I'm probably going to encounter a bit of tide. I'm not going to be able to hold on for very long, so if I take my time I might capture some bass or maybe some other schooling fish that normally stay um, pelagic ones that are on near the surface. Fingers crossed. Uh, that's not good. There's a crab pot. I really hope my line hasn't got caught underneath that because I've just swim from my right hand side around the corner of the reef. Looks okay, might be alright. It's just too much tide. I can't swim into it and my buff is pulling me away from the reef so I think that's the end of that dive. Um, a grand total of two scallops. Mm. Matt will be happy with that. I absolutely love them dives. That dive could have gone any which way. I could have turned left, I could have gone right, I could have gone deeper, I could have gone shallower. Every time you dive something like that, you see something different. That's the beauty about a reef dive. And the awesome thing is you get to see stuff even when you're coming back up. Thanks for coming along on another dive. Uh, I hope to see you on the next one. Please comment uh, and let me know what you thought about that dive. 
I'll catch you on the next tide.